then we move to goal four and five because goal five in this budget process, I've been kind of telling the board I won't do this at the hearing, but I've been kind of um, selling this that we should probably take a look at our goals again, especially with goal number five. It's the last part of really, you know, decreasing expenses. I'm not sure that's ever going to be a reality for any school district, decreasing expenses. And conservation um, conservation practices remain vital. So we, we have some uh, we have some new information that we're going to share with you as part of the superintendent's report tonight. That it is kind of pointing to those con con conservation practices. So generally, the draft budget um, contains expenditures, as you see in front of you. Nothing new here. We are looking at a total um, increase year to year. About a million two. That's a 2.93 percent increase, right around that two to three percent increase that we know we will see every year, just about, unless something amazing happens. Those revenues um, that we expect to see are in front of you also. The tax levy probably being the most, um, the most point of interest. I would say 4.47 percent increase in tax levy from year to year. And the, um, the, the tax levy increase year to year is less than it was the previous time. So that's not a bad thing. If you look at our appropriate fund balance, we always keep a careful eye on that. We're trying to, to I think we'll always have to appropriate fund balance because we have it. That's closing the gap between our expenditures and revenues. But we're trying to do it less. This year, we have enough, just over $100,000 less uh, using the fund balance. But we continue to use um, our reserves in planned way to see there the nine hundred thousand dollars mark. That is workers' comp and yes. DRS. Those are the two funds that we've taken from here to the foot. Again, nothing new, but we are looking at a two point nine three percent increase in revenue from year to year. Broke those down a little bit further in this slide. Um, Try to explain what state aid consists of. Again. You can not decide how to slow down. By all means, I'm happy to do that. We moved into the three components of the budget, um, which is actually illustrated here. Just as a reminder, about 20% of our budget is capital, about 10 is administrative, and right around 70 is more than some of these program as it should be. And we move back to the administrative portion. I have outlined for the board. Nothing in here, a 2%, 2.04% 2 increase in the administrative component, mostly salary and benefits there. Broke that down a little bit. What is other by the administrative portion of the budget? The Board of Education, the superintendent basically, which is central admin, finance, legal personnel, administrative supervision, our principals, their office staff, and then central services and special items, mostly referring to books and services. We move to the capital portion of the budget right around, um, I think, December, January. The capital portion is pretty much the operation of our plant. Um, we added a we added a line in the maintenance of the plant. If you remember, that's why that's highlighted there. Um, to try to add some maintenance dollars into this particular component for. Necessary uh, repairs or maintenance, uh, debt service increased a little bit too, and overall 4.23% increase in the capital component. And those changes, as you see before, I'll try to explain a little bit more carefully what those changes were, what they meant. Here are the pieces of our capital component. A reminder about the capital outlay, the way we will build this at the hearing will be to extract the two remaining, um, is it gas? Uh, oil. The oil. Sorry. Oil came from the ground. We've gotten one high school uh, oil tank out of the ground, and you're going to approve a bid tonight, which if you're looking at your debt report tonight, you wouldn't have seen it because it's a green sheet item. The resolution would be just as that's a $100,000 project moving into next year. Here 
you're going to see in the resolution that the oil tank we're taking out of the ground now came in at about 39, dollars much lower than we anticipated. So we have pretty good faith that we're going to be able to pay two hours. <laughs> Uh, program component, we spent most of our time on this, and it is a 2.68% increase year to year. Just to explain a little bit more the piece of instructional funding, which is the highest, um, mostly all tied to salary and benefits. There's not a whole lot more than there. The program component, um, salary items, again, the increase is broken down. Um, this slide is not new either. A couple of changes though. Um, new budgeted positions at senior campus for the transportation facilities department. Um, uh, for the transportation director, he was approved last month. And he will fulfill that role in the coming weeks. And then, um, you know, the facilities department, as you can imagine, taking on all these capital projects presents a whole lot of clerical um, need. So we're hoping that will go really well. There are existing budgeted positions. I want to just know about in, in the budget uh, from last year. Our transportation safety plan has been a topic of conversation in <coughs> some of our committee meetings, and certainly at the board level, because we had a couple things to keep in mind moving to electric buses. Um, what that looks like. We had a transportation ad hoc committee, which was discussing our move from BOCES. We're making some progress there. So we've got to think about that plan for spending when it comes to buses. And you will see um, that this transportation plan that we have, normally we're looking at 23, 24, that third column there, replacing two buses for this coming year in this budget, a separate proposition. Um, and then moving on, we have not made the changes we want to make. But I think we're going to be looking at one to two buses being replaced, thinking about electric buses in the future. That plan will change as you see right now. A reminder of what we are funding through some of those special COVID um, federal grants. Again, nothing new here. And I think you have in front of you, if you can read that small. Right? Um, yeah, previously too. Um, this was the Educate Board on this board. Probably will not say at the slide, but just to remind the board that we already received annual federal payments through the IDA grants, the title grants to fund some of the work we do with students. A reminder in this slide that we are funding three full day universal pre K classrooms that were part of our expansion. All of these things stay in the budget and are central to the work we're doing for the rest of this particular budget, especially the comprehensive instructional plan. That moving uh, long range financial planning as well. Um, a reminder what is in our small capital project because we have a peripheral view of, of our finances and a long range plan. And the small capital project, although that's getting to be the near its completion, the track and the expense around it being replaced this summer. Um, can I throw in something? That's probably going to be all summer. It's going to affect practice schedules in the fall, or the late summer, I should say. And I've already warned Mr. Ostrand, and uh, we've already warned our architects not to drag it on and push it. Um, but that's just something that requires a lot of curing, uh, uh, carrying out, and replacing. And then the meeting <laughs> capital. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, everybody say, pull for no rains. <laughs> yeah, pull for good weather, and we're going to have a gorgeous facility. All finished. Medium uh, EPC capital projects are in the planning stage. We have an owner's meeting today. Um, I won't go into too much detail there, but things are going well in that realm as well. Um, reminder audit budget and finance, you'll hear the report tonight. We took some time to look at the reserve plan, which is something the board's going to be engaged with in the next couple of months. Like what are we going to do with any surplus money? How are we going to look at our reserve plan? funding school districts uh, needs in the future. Plus purchase, Board of Education trustee seats, um, those are all um, uh, propositions of the 
Uh, the establishment of the capital reserve fund, particularly, also uh, in scope as a proposition. This is a draft budget summary for your, for your use. We do have already planned our contingency budget, but the budget should be voted down by law. We have to, we have to amend our budget, and I'm going to recommend, as I told you a couple months ago, that we continue with our spending plan, and we need money from the fund balance. Budget vote. A lot of what you see here will be in the hearing. That's it. Any, any questions I can answer? I go through the way. Good. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to switch some things around on the agenda this evening uh, to accommodate one of our board members. Um, client demands. Um, so we're going to move item four reports toward the end of the agenda and we're going to begin um, with the consent agenda. But first um, comes the comments from the public on agenda and non agenda items. The Board of Education welcomes district residents, parents, students, and other people to our meeting. Community involvement at board meetings is encouraged so that we can better understand your views. Please be aware that individual student information or particular personnel issues will not be discussed by this board during public session. When recognized by the board president, please state your name and address. Statements are restricted to a maximum of three minutes and speakers will be notified by the board president when their time has expired. When speaking, the public shall direct their comments to the board and not to district staff or other audience members. Speakers shall not expect board members to answer questions during public comment. Questions shall be referred to the superintendent or his or her, or her designee uh, for review, study, and response. If appropriate, the board may request the issue uh, be a discussion item at a future board of education meeting or board of education committee meeting. Is there anyone that would wish to address the board at this time? Okay, seeing no one step to the microphone, uh, we will move on to the consent agenda. In an effort to expedite the business of the Board of Education, but in no way meant to diminish the importance of each item, the consent agenda may be used for the items in this section. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any one board member. Items not removed will be adopted by general consent without debate. Any removed items may be taken up either immediately after the consent agenda or placed later on the agenda at the discretion of the board. Um, so the consent agenda includes the consent action business items on page, uh, the first page, one of nine, uh, moving to consent action personnel on page two, um, through consent action uh, approval of CSE, CPSE, and 504 committee minutes. Um, anybody wish to remove any item from that agenda? So can I get a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented? Uh, March, can I get a second? Will, uh, any uh, discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye, raise your hand. Sorry, I can't confuse you these days. Um, I believe that's unanimous, right? Thank you. Um, moving on to action items. Um, which is on page three of nine. Uh, we're gonna start with the abolishment of policies. Um, this has to do with policy 7241, release of information to the non-custodial parent. The language is now in policy 7240, uh, as well as policy 7361, uh, gun-free schools policy, which is replaced by policy 7360, weapons of school and the gun-free schools act, and policy 73. 13, suspension of students. Um, so, can I get a motion to um, approve that uh, change in policy? Huh? Second. Uh, hold on a minute. All right, can I get a second? Motion. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, I'd like to understand more about implementing the Right. 
So, Dr. Frank Johnson, you offer an explanation. Uh, Bill is asking a more, a uh, little bit more depth of understanding on policy 7241 release of information to non custodial parent. Yeah. What does it all mean? And let me get to that. The, we had a policy 7241 called release of information to non custodial parent. These policies are now covered in another policy that we already adopted. And so it's a redundancy policy. And the policy, um, I think you had it in your board packet, but it, it gives parents the authority to request information regarding their children and then release that information upon request. That's all. So. I was just concerned in case there was um, acrimony or there was a court order or something that the non custodial parent should not happen. Which happens a lot, but we had good records. Typically, as long, we have good records as long as the parents get into this. And so, because custody is, is something that we are tuned into pretty well. So. Any further discussion? Okay, and I'll be clear this time. Raise your hand if you're in favor. So, all those in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. I'm sorry. Yes, um, so Ron motion and Marge second. Okay, moving on to item two, uh, budget, budget proposition. This is to accept the proposed budget of expenditures of the Greater Johnstown School District for the school year 2023-24 in the amount of 42 million $222,306 and for the purposes shown in the statement of estimated expenditure adopted by the Board of Education B and the same hereby is approved and the amount thereof shall be raised by a levy of the tax upon the taxable property of the school district after first deducting the monies available from state aid and other sources as provided by law. Can I get a motion to accept as presented? Well, a second. On. Any discussion? Could I just, if you want to wait for Mr. Trump, I think he's going to be coming. Sorry to ask the question. But I just... um, we have a quorum, but you are correct. It would probably be best to wait. So um, let's hold off till a little later. We'll table this. Is that the correct terminology? Tabling it for the later in the meeting. All right, so we'll keep an eye on the clock and we'll work that back in. I think so too. Um, so, item three, property tax report card. Same as Spencer. Oh, they're not. Okay, good. Gotcha. Sorry. Okay, this agenda is really going along great. Um, so, item number four. Um, we're good on this, right? Okay. Uh, resolution dated April 20th, uh, 2023, of the Board of Education of City School District, of the City of Johnstown, authorizing the transfer of funds. Uh, this is for um, the City uh, School District, uh, issued its $36,885,000 school district bonds, 2019, to finance a capital project approved by the voters uh, on December 9, 2014. Whereas the purpose has been completed and there remains on deposit in the debt service fund unused proceeds of the bonds in the amount of approximately 2.463 million. And whereas section 165 of the local finance law provides that any proceeds of obligations remaining after the object or purpose for which the obligation for issue has been completed shall be applied to the payment of the principal of and interest on such obligations. And whereas in compliance with section 165 of local finance laws, the Board of Education and School District desires to authorize the transfer of the amount on deposit in the debt service fund to the general fund to be used to pay debt service on the bonds in the 2022-23 fiscal year. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Education of the City School District of the City of Johnstown that the amount on deposit in the debt service fund shall be transferred from the debt service fund to the general fund to be used to pay debt service on the bonds in the 2022-23 fiscal year. 
Uh, the assistant superintendent is hereby authorized to take such actions as may be necessary to affect the transfer of funds authorized pursuant to section one hereof. And uh, this resolution shall take effect immediately upon its adoption. Can I get a motion for that resolution as presented? Jen, second? Well, okay, any discussion? This topic has come up in prior presentations about uh, uh, reserve accounts and debt management. Um, so the concept should be fairly familiar with everybody. We discussed it at the Audit Budget Finance Committee several times. Okay. Any comments, questions, concerns? Hearing none. Um, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of the resolution as presented, please raise your hand. All right, we are unanimous in that decision. Okay, going back to item two and item three. Art, um, we had to move the agenda up a little bit to make some uh, accommodation for the members. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, item number two on page four of nine. Budget proposition um, to um, approve, uh, to accept the proposed budget of expenditures of the Greater Johnson School District for the school year 2023 in the amount of 14,218,000 bare and six hours, and for the purpose of showing the statement of estimated expenditure adopted by the Board of Education, be in the same hereby approved, and the amount thereof shall be raised by a levy of tax on the taxable property of the school district. After first deducting the monies available from state aid and other sources as provided by law. Okay, uh, can I give a motion to accept that? Mark? Can I get a second? Mark? Uh, discussion? Comments, questions? Well, just, just a statement, you know, based on what we saw in the budget, this is just pretty much cost of living expenses and money that you have. Okay. Contraction. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Raise your hand. Okay, everybody unanimous in that decision. Next, item three property tax report card. Um, this is to approve the property tax report card for the Greater Johnstown School District for the school year 2023 24 for submission to the New York State Education Department as provided by law, effective April 20th, 2023, as seen is in addendum number three. Uh, can I get a motion? Bev? Second? Yes? Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Unanimous. Okay, moving on to item five. On page five, I need to turn this over to Joyelle. I need to recuse myself from this discussion. I have a conflict of interest, so I will step out. Please let me know when the discussion is over. So, number five is the award of the contract of for typographic and boundary survey services, whereas the Greater Johnson School District conducted a conducted a request for proposal with a submission deadline of March 24th, 2023 for typographic and boundary sur survey services. And whereas a proposal submitted by CT Mills Associates meets all requirements contained in said request, request for proposal now therefore. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Greater Johnstown School District hereby awards a contract for typographic and boundary survey services to CT Mills Associates in the amount of $22,000 um, and hereby authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute such agreement and further authorize payment as contained therein. Can I get a motion? Jen and Beth, second by Beth. Um, any discussion? Um, yes, yeah, just a little more information. So were they the lowest bidder? Uh, this was open bid, they were the lowest they were the lowest. How, how many bids did we receive? Uh, I think it was three we received. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? No. Um, all in favor? Okay. We, uh, I'll text Dave to come back one more time. No, I'm looking at the new certificate for this uh, new room. Thank you. I'm going to jump up and grab it. I got it. Okay.
for admission to the athletic, uh, Western Athletic Council. Uh, this is to accept the recommendation of the superintendent as follows. Whereas the Greater Johnstown School District is currently a member of the Foothills Council, and whereas on November 30th, 2022, the Greater Johnstown School District Shared Decision Making Committee established the Greater Johnstown School District Interscholastic Athletics Ad Hoc Committee to study interscholastic athletic programs and conference membership for the Greater Johnstown School District and whereas the aforesaid shared decision-making ad hoc committee conducted four duly advertised public meetings on December 8th, 2022, January 19th, 2023, February 1st, 2023, and March 1st, 2023 to study interscholastic athletic programs and conference membership for the Greater Johnstown School District and Whereas on March 3rd, 2023, the Director of Physical Education and Health and Athletics and Extracurricular Program submitted a document to the Superintendent of Schools that sets forth the unanimous consensus of the Shared Decision Making Ad Hoc Committee for first and second choice recommendations, a copy of which is attached hereto and made a part hereof as Exhibit A. And whereas the Superintendent of Schools supports the recommendations as set forth in Exhibit A. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Greater Johnstown School District hereby adopts the recommendation set forth in Exhibit A and directs the Superintendent of Schools to take the steps necessary to facilitate the implementation of said recommendations. Can I get a motion to accept this resolution? Well, I get a second. Okay, okay discussion, uh, questions, comments. Okay, I will simply state for the record that uh, the ad hoc process um, through the shared decision making team um, was something that I've monitored over the uh, last uh, several months, uh, basically se since September of 2022. Um, it is my belief that that committee did its work um, uh, in the way it's supposed to be done, and I think the recommendation um, is, um, is, is a clean recommendation. Um, it involved um, a number of uh, stakeholders that, had, uh, that would be impacted by this decision, and um, I think um, ultimately uh, the process did what it was intended to do. Um, does anybody have any questions about that recommendation before we vote on it? So, um, with that being said, I will ask for a vote in favor of this uh, uh, resolution. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, and unanimous decision. Should I say that? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just, just to remind everybody that there is a, what I call a white paper, sounds stupid, but basically it's a comprehensive look at the process. And in several pages, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it or read it, but in there is a data section, and you know, student population of school districts aside, those schools in the WAC, um, the median school population, nine through 12, is about 250 students. Ours is 410. The median student population, nine through 12, in our foothills uh, college schools is 750. So there's, there's, a, there's a delta there. I mean, the distance between us and our foothills college is is about 310 students, whereas the WAC is about 190 students. That was something I wanted to tell you. And also, um, we did address the other athletics that aren't really mentioned too much, like field hockey and lacrosse are certainly. But we also uh, mentioned in the white paper girls' golf swimming. So there is a section there that kind of explains what we'll do there. Thank you. And I'd just like to go on record thanking the participants of the shared decision-making team 
and the ad hoc committees are putting in their work to make this decision happen. Um, and I hope we can all get behind this decision and move forward in what's best for the school district. So, um, moving on, uh, we have item number eight, which is a declaration of surplus items for public auction. auction. Uh, whereas the Board of Education, the Greater Johnstown School District desires to declare as surplus and dispose of a 2008 Ford 350, effective April 20th, 2023, and the obsolete, unusable, or undesirable district home inventory set forth above is hereby declared to be surplus uh, to the needs of the Greater Johnstown School District. Uh, be it resolved that the assistant superintendent or school district treasurer working in conjunction with the director of buildings and grounds are hereby authorized to dispose of the aforesaid surplus property by any means allowable to include include offering for sale a public <coughs> auction donation to a nonprofit organization internet online auction upset bid process or destruction and be it further resolved any of the efforts aforesaid items not sold via public auction which have a fair market value less than a thousand dollars may subsequently be sold by the assistant superintendent or school district treasurer by private sale or destroyed and uh, further resolved notice in the public auction will be advertised as required by statute and the result of the surplus property auction or private sale shall be reported at the next regular meeting of the invitation uh, so can i get a motion to accept uh, that well, Mark. Okay. Um, any discussion? Questions, comments? All those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Item number nine: establishment of pay scale for buildings and grounds substitute pay rates. This is a resolution adopted um, by resolution adopted July fourteenth. Uh, 2023, the Board of Education established a substitute pay schedule for the 22-23 school year, which included a rate of minimum wage for buildings and ground substitutes. And whereas the Board of Education now wishes to restructure the pay scale for buildings and ground substitutes, therefore be it resolved that buildings and ground substitutes in the Greater Johnstown School District shall be paid as follows, effective April 21st, 2023. Uh, you can see that the schedule is provided, um, and I would look for a motion uh, for acceptance. Art, can I have a second? Beth, uh, do we have a discussion? Is the date supposed to be 2022? Um, July 14th. Okay. Any comments? Any further comments? Questions? All those in favor of accepting this as presented? Okay, we are unanimous. Item 10, award for bid for the 2022-23 capital outlay project, which is the removal of oil tank, uh, one oil tank at Johnson High School. Um, uh, received and accepted the bids on April 11th for the removal of the oil tank. Um, and the apparent low bidder is Real Deal Landscaping, LLC of Coldbrook, New York. And uh, the architect, Tetra Tech, um, has recommended the award of the contract and resolved that the, be it resolved, the Board of Education hereby awards the contract for the 2022-23 capital outlay project to Real Deal uh, Landscaping for base in the amount of $34,866 for a total contract award of $34,866 and be it further resolved that the school district administration, architect, and legal counsel are directed to draft and execute necessary documents to commence construction on the project. Can I get a motion? Chen, second. Beth? Okay. Any discussion? How many bids? Four. Four. Thank you. <laughs> Any further questions, comments, discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Moving on to action items personnel. 
So uh, we have a couple of our appointees present this evening. So we will start with the probationary appointment of Sharon Smith, uh, teaching assistant. Um, so this is to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the probationary appointment of Sharon Smith as teaching assistant in the teaching assistant tenure area at $14.20 per hour, seven and a half hours a day, effective May 8th, 2020 through May 7th, 2026, pursuant to the contractual agreement between the Johnstown Teachers Association and the Greater Johnstown School District. The fingerprint review has been completed and receipt of the clearance certificate by the Commissioner of Education is on file. And I get a motion to accept this. March. Uh, Bev, second. Any discussion? Questions? Um, is Mrs. Smith here? Okay, she is. Um, all those in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Congratulations. Okay, we have item number two under personnel probationary appointment of Samantha Hammonds, special education teacher. This is to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the probationary appointment of Samantha Hammonds, a special education teacher in the special education teacher tenure area, effective April 24, 2023, for a four year term tentatively scheduled to conclude on April 23rd, 2027, pending certification by November 7th, 2023, and contingent upon successful completion of the probationary term and having received composite or overall annual professional performance review. Ratings of either effective or highly effective in at least two of the three preceding years, and a rating higher than ineffective at the conclusion of the 2026 27 school year. Salary will be at a step A1, uh, prorated of the salary schedule pursuant to the contractual agreement between the Johnstown Teachers Association and the Greater Johnstown School District. The fingerprint review has been completed, and a receipt of the clearance certificate by the Commissioner of Education is on file. Is Ms. Hammonds in attendance? You are. Okay. Um, so, do I have a motion? March? Bev? Okay, any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Please raise your hand. Okay, we are in agreement. Uh, congratulations, welcome to the district. Okay, we have a probationary appointment of Cassandra Fabel, special education teacher. Um, okay, uh, to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the probationary appointment of Cassandra Fabel as special education teacher in the special education teacher tenure area, effective August 29, 2023, for a three year term, tentatively scheduled to conclude on August 28, 2026 contingent upon successful completion of the probationary term and having received composite or overall annual professional performance review ratings of either effective or highly effective in at least two of the three preceding years and a rating higher than ineffective at the conclusion of the 25-26 school year. Salary will be at step C14 of the salary schedule plus $240 for six graduate credits pursuant to the contractual agreement between the JTA and the Greater Johnson School District, the fingerprint review has been completed and received the clearance certificate by the Commissioner of Education is on file. Um, is is this table here? No. So, um, do I have a motion to accept? Art? Second? March? Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. We are in agreement. <clears throat> Next, we have the probationary appointment of Kristen Michaels, CSE chairperson. This is to accept. The, oh, let's go. Okay, go, let's go up to number four. Probationary appointment of Alexandra Van Arnhem, elementary teacher. This is to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the probationary appointment of Alexandra Van Arnhem as elementary teacher in the elementary <coughs> area, 
effective August 29th, 2023, for a four year term tentatively scheduled to conclude on August 28th, 2027, and contingent upon successful completion of the probationary term, having received composite or overall annual professional performance review ratings of either effective or highly effective in at least two of the three preceding years, and rating higher than an ineffective at the conclusion of the 26 27 school year. Salary will be at step C4 of the salary schedule pursuant to the contractual agreement between the Johnstown Teachers Association and the Greater Johnstown School District. The fingerprint review has been completed and a receipt of the clearance certificate by the Commissioner of Education is on file. Um, I do not believe Ms. Miller is here. I see her. I do not believe she is. Okay. Um, so, can I get a motion? Well, Second, Bev. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Uh, we are unanimous. Thank you. Okay, now number five, probationary appointment of Kristen Michael, CSC chairperson. This is to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the probationary appointment of Kristen Michaels as CSC chairperson in the administrative tenure area pending certification by December 15, 2023. Effective May 22nd, 2023, for a four year term, tentatively scheduled to conclude on May 21st, 2027, and contingent upon successful completion of the probationary term and having received deposit of overall annual professional performance review ratings of either effective or highly effective in at least two of the three preceding years, and a rating higher than ineffective at the conclusion of the 26 27 school year. Salary will be at $80,000 prorated pursuant to the contractual agreement between the Johnstown Administrators Association and the Greater Johnstown School District. Fingerprint review has been completed and received of the clearance certificate by the Commissioner of Education is on file. Can I get a motion? Uh, first of all, is Ms. Michaels here? No. Um, can I get a, a, a motion to accept? March, second? Uh, Jen? Um, any discussion? All those in favor? And we are unanimous. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the um, Baltimore agenda. We're going to go back in time to the reports. So, um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we will uh, begin actually with the employee leadership report uh, presented by Nancy Masicki. Good evening. Um, tonight, Dr. Chad Swanson will be presenting the JTA leadership report. But uh, before that, on behalf of the district faculty, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the district's commitment to supporting our students' social-emotional social needs. We are an educational institution with accountability measures that are measured by academic achievement. Dr. Crankshaw has actually repeatedly reminded us of our goal to provide an appropriate and viable curriculum to our students. What many don't understand is that without the support and intervention from service providers, such as our psychologists, our behaviorists, our social workers, and our school counselors, we can't actually get to the learning. So many of our students are kind of detoured from the road to receiving an appropriate and viable curriculum by some things that they cannot control. And that's where this team comes in. They support the social emotional needs so that the students can access the academics that are being offered to them. So it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Chad Swanson, who will tell you a little bit more about that. Good evening. Uh, so good evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to present uh, to the board tonight. Um, I'm here. I'm the school psychologist from uh, Warren Street Elementary School. I'm also the SEAL uh, department coordinator. And I want to talk a little bit about an overview of what our department is and uh, the, about some of the important work that we do. 
Social emotional learning has always been a priority um, in schools because, like Nancy said, um, if we aren't addressing the mental and behavioral health needs um, adequately, um, we're, we're not able to help students learn. So we know that when we have a solid uh, social emotional learning team and uh, program in place, we actually see academic achievement improve. Um, students attend school more regularly uh, because they're connected to their teachers and they're connected to their peers. Uh, they're able to better focus on their learning in class uh, and they're able to engage actively in the lesson plans that our, our teachers work tirelessly to deliver. Uh, providing early intervention supports for mental and behavioral health needs can actually help prevent needing additional services down the line, uh, such as special education. Um, investing in social emotional learning helps to provide students with uh, the critical life skills uh, that will be needed to be competitive in a workforce in the future that's going to place an emphasis on soft skills like communication skills, problem solving, emotional regulation, conflict resolution, time management, organizational skills, and problem solving. So our SEAL providers and all of our teachers and all of our administrators and all of the adults that work with the children in our district help throughout their educational experience here in Johnstown um, help teach those critical social skills. So who are SEAL providers? Uh, like Nancy said, we have school psychologists, uh, we have a team of school counselors, school social workers, and behavior specialists. And we do have some contracted SEAL providers in, in, our, in our team. So at the high school, for example, we have a student support counselor and community outreach specialist as well. Um, so all students, whether they're general education students or they're special education students, they have access to the services that our SEAL providers uh, provide. And as a SEAL coordinator, I collaborate with each of the providers and each of the SEAL teams uh, within our district to ensure that the services that we do provide um, are done um, effectively and with best practices. Before I talk about some of the services that we provide, I, I really I need to let you know about some of the challenges that we're seeing some of our, our students face in the district. So I just want to talk briefly about that. And we've talked a little bit about it before at heard at board meetings that we do have a growing population of students in our district that are experiencing uh, you know, different stressors, uh, mental health challenges, and in some cases even um, significant and lasting trauma. Uh, for many of our students, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about the effects of the pandemic. Um, we're seeing you know, that had led to a disruption in our learning time in school which led to a disruption in socialization opportunities. So our teachers are seeing more and more students in their classrooms um, having difficulty uh, with shutting down over the frustration of the, of the work, um, not having the stamina that they once had uh, towards the rigor of the curriculum. So they need emotional supports to get through those frustrations. Our students have difficulty with executive functioning skills. Uh, some of our students have difficulty organizing their materials, knowing where their homework is, remembering to write their assignment down on their agenda, uh, difficulty with time management. Um, additionally, they're struggling with coping um, with their emotions, and they're struggling with their social skills to navigate friendships and uh, social conflicts that arise. But what's really uh, important to know is that we're seeing more and more students in crisis. So we're seeing students who are unsafe at times, who are aggressive at times, who are um, disruptive in the classroom, and they need additional support that you know, our teachers are doing the very best that they can to reach those students, but they do need additional supports um, like counselors and our, and our SEAL team members. So what does that look like? So at the elementary level, we're seeing some kids who are crying inconsolably. We're seeing some kids running out of the classroom we're seeing some kids um, having difficulty with hurting themselves when they get frustrated. At the upper uh, elementary grades um, through high school, we're seeing increased uh, students who have suicidal ideation, who have um, engaged in self-harm behaviors like cutting, uh, physical aggression towards their staff in the classroom, as well as their peers. Um, and so in response to all of these challenges, I really have to talk about the hard work 
that all of our teachers and our staff have put into to supporting all, all of our children to help them learn and to help them grow. But the district has really focused on bolstering uh, the SEAL department in a lot of ways, not just by staffing, but uh, by the work that we do. Um, but we, we did need more providers, and we continue to need more providers uh, to help support our students more proactively and preventatively so we don't uh, get to this point where this is a, a continued issue that we're not addressing. So having stable SEAL teams in each building, for example, having full-time uh, providers and not being stretched too thin by uh, being split between buildings is so critical. It allows SEAL providers to engage in preventative and intervention supports that are responsive to these growing mental health needs. It provides SEAL providers, uh, or prevents SEAL providers from having unmanageable caseloads. And it allows SEAL providers to develop the relationships with the teachers and the staff in each building, as well as with the students, uh, in order to help uh, support all of these needs. Um, and we are able to support these needs. We're finding that when we put the preventative supports in place, when we have the right fit and the right number of SEAL providers, we're able to address the needs that we're seeing. But another need that we're seeing in, just in the community is that there's not, there's often long wait lists for kids to get mental health counseling in the community um, or in psychiatric care in the community. So we're doing everything that we can do within the walls of our school building to address these growing needs. So what do SEAL providers do? These are just some of the services that we offer our district. So we support character education and promote positive school climate. Uh, we provide school counseling services. School counseling is a little different from mental health therapy, uh, but school counseling focuses on their child's social skills and coping skills within the school setting to, to make sure that they're successful. We provide behavior support planning and intervention. Um, our school psychologists and our behavior specialists work really closely together uh, to ensure that we have a good um, <coughs> tier system to make sure that we're providing the, the right amount of supports for the behavioral need. Uh, we provide um, psychological and academic evaluation services. So our school psychologists do evaluations primarily to determine if students um, need additional services through special education. We provide consultation to teachers, um, consultation to administrators. Um, and systems level consultation is something I take a, a big interest in because I think if if I can work with administration to develop processes to make sure that all of our students access the services that we can provide, I can make a bigger impact. We can make a bigger impact for our students. Um, respond, crisis response and intervention. Um, I need you to know that in our building this year, in each of our buildings, we've provided over 100 hours of crisis response for students who, who needed additional support. Um, and so that looks like a student has, is having difficulty calming down, so someone goes to that classroom to provide that support. Um, within that, we provide risk assessments at times as well. So if a student is saying something concerning that they, they want to harm themselves. Um, at Warren Street alone, um, in grade three through six, I've done, my, the team that I work with has done 40 risk assessments for students who may have suicidal ideation, or some of these risk assessments are school violence threat assessments because they have made a comment that they may um, inflict harm on somebody else. In addition to all of these services, especially for the high school, our school counselors they, um, do academic advisement and planning for post-secondary. Uh, all of our teams provide referrals to outside agencies to make sure that these students, who, especially who are in crisis, are getting the supports that they need. And we provide professional development to our teachers as well. I mean, I have to give our teachers so much credit because we're asking them to do way more than just teach. Um, we're actually, we've trained over 100 uh, teachers and staff members so far this year through our, uh, our TCI trainers, or our uh, Therapeutic Crisis Intervention Program, to help teachers learn the skills to de-escalate a student in crisis or to provide that mental health first aid. So in many ways, our teachers are, are actually uh, somewhat counselors in the classroom setting and, and provide a lot of those emotional supports as well. So I know I've discussed a lot of the challenges that we face, um, but I want to talk about some of the things that the department has done to address the growing needs of all of our students. 
So our department has created a SEAL resource guide for students and families, which we're going to be rolling out um, soon this school year, which will have all sorts of resources that families can reach out to local, regional um, uh, clinics and um, places for, for counseling in the community um, or evaluation services. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so we're um, partnering with our wellness committee uh, to do a mental health awareness campaign in May. Uh, in response to the growing risk assessment needs in our district, we've created a K-12 protocol for suicidal ideation and school violence threat assessments. Uh, we, we're collaborating with the Family Counseling Center next year because, like I said, there's a long wait list to get services outside of the community, so we're trying to bring some of those services uh, back to the four walls of our, of our buildings. So hopefully we'll have a mental health counselor a couple days a week providing supports in grades 5 through 12. Um, I talked a little bit about our therapeutic crisis intervention training. Um, we're strengthening our multi-tiered systems of support to make sure that we are um, triaging the needs in our district and giving the students the right supports that they need. We're trying to use as much data as we can to inform decisions, and I pass that data on to our administration every month. Um, and right now we're working on transition planning for next school year. So I know that um, down at Pleasant Avenue, the SEAL team down there is meeting with um, preschool uh, teams. And I know that each of our buildings are going to be meeting um, to, to talk about the students that we are working with this year to have a smooth transition up to next year. Um, and so I just want to thank the board again for letting me uh, present to you and um, being so supportive of social emotional learning in our district. Um, and I know that with all the supports that we are able to provide, our students can grow and are growing socially and emotionally. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swanson. Okay, um, going back to the um, report section, Dr. Crankshaw, would you be giving your I, I just have a couple of things. Um, I wanted to let you know that the testing program is underway, and I want to thank Nicole Benton and the principals for obviously uh, you know, operationalizing this program. But today I called Nicole and she filled me in on how things are going. So we had this week we started PLA testing, um, our three through eight program. And Nicole let me know that um, Wednesday and Thursday are grades three through five, Thursday. Uh, next Tuesday, we also have some for grades four through six. Um, opt outs are way down, there's zero in most all cases, except for grade eight, <laughs> which has 18 opt outs. Um, that's the second that one. But um, Nicole has some reasons, I think, for that, reasons she feels. But this is a really good thing to have zero opt outs in most all grades, except for eight. Um, I think these are mostly cited test anxiety grade eight, which we'll talk to. You know, I think the principal has contacted the parents um, as a result of those who wanted to opt out their child. By federal law, we just have to remember the district that we have to have 95% participation or else, you know, we run the risk of being on the list. Again, we don't want that. So, um, so uh, those children who did opt out had a, had a similar assessment given to them rather than just the book. A similar assessment was created by the school to, to kind of mimic the rigor that they would experience at the regular test. And um, we have no feedback on that yet, but I think everything went okay. Next week, we're going to see the math 3 through 8 testing program or in May. We're going to see that in May, the math program. Um, just to remind the board, if you get any questions about this, the tests have been modified, these state tests. There are two day tests. Um, there is no opt out, by the way, that's not a thing. Think it is, but it's not even a thing. People continue to do it, and our own commissioner does not really resist it as much as I, we would hope that um, she would. Um, tests are modified to two days, short response is spread over two days rather than just all in one day um, to help with the stamina of our students. All the questions now are created by New York State teachers, and these are based on the New York State Learning Standards as they are now not common core standards. So, just a couple of details for you. Um, I have one more item about the solar project potential I've been talking with you about. Essentially, this is another energy performance contract. 
uh, that cold call from a company called Renovus with a 16 acre site potentially behind uh, Johnson High School. Um, I want you to know the steps we followed. I had that cold call that we met with our capital improvements partners, our architects, and you know, project managers, ESCO, Mr. Wood, um, Mrs. Coster. We then um, called them to come back and meet with this Renovus company. Um, they asked a bunch of questions. The interest of the district. Uh, last Thursday, I visited Maine and Wells Central School District. I'm the superintendent there, and this is legitimate. I mean, they have they have a solar array on their elementary school campus, which is paying all of their electric bills um, and giving them about three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year of income. Uh, so, you know, just these are important things to consider. But the next step, I believe, is a board presentation by this company or notice. Um, certainly to the facilities committee, but I hope for the board. Um, and then we have to study the viability of such a project by seeing if there's enough capacity in our utilities, uh, national grid. Um, there's a study that the board would be happy to support, and it's a $15,000 study. We lay that out and learn pretty quickly if we can do this. But if it's possible and if the community can accept it, I think there's a great benefit um, financially and with energy down, down the road. It's added income, pays our electricity, our educational benefits, and certainly taxpayer relief. So we have to think about all those things. And just a reminder too, that administrative offices should be moved back to one Sir Bill Circle, Street 101, starting next week. So don't come here and see me. I'm there, okay. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Wood and his team, Alicia Costa here for making all that possible. Point of question. Um, yeah. If your offices are moving back over there, where will we be moving that board? It's it's really up to you. I mean, do you want to have consistency by meeting here for the public sake? Or, you know, more comfort? <laughs> comfort. <laughs> well, the com I think it'd be more comfortable to get it. I would think we would at least stay here until we get more of the vaccine. That's usually kind of thing for the public. Not easier for Elena. She's got no bags. Um, <laughs> any comments? Yeah. 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 We'll figure out the option. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I have no board report to offer. Um, there are a few committee reports. Um, you'll note that you've been provided copies of the facilities committee, personnel committee, and audit budget and finance committee reports. Um, I think. Um, but they had copies as part of the distribution earlier. Uh, no? Okay. All right. So, with the facilities committee meeting report, uh, I'll provide that now. Um, we met on April 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, we discussed the reconfiguration, uh, the, the moving that's necessary with regard to the reconfiguration of our grade levels and the reopening of Knox. Um, and the planning has been ongoing uh, with regard to the logistics of the moves. Um, also, discussion about capital, uh, the medium capital project. Um, it is progressing as it needs to be. Um, the, there was an owners meeting um, uh, back on, in April. Um, there was uh, discussion about schematic design, and um, Turner, the construction manager, had issued some RFIs as a result of the owners meeting, um, and. They're in the process of finalizing the schematic design cost estimate um, and should be arriving soon. Okay. I think at the time we had talked about it coming in sometime middle of April. So. Um, we still plan to submit the app for SED approval late fall of 2023. Uh, there's a pitch consultant involved with, uh, for Pleasant and Warren with regard to new walk in coolers. Uh, not removing the uh, Warren Street stage as it's no longer a need for the space. Um, lighting controls. 
um, mutual collaboration of work between MCP and ECP, uh, and including dimmable lighting. Construction begins summer of 2024 through fall of 2025. Topographic boundary survey um, is necessary by Petrotech. Um, put out the RFP for the surveyor. And then brief discussion of the uh, EPC uh, with regard to scope development. Uh, April 19th, Petrotech responded to the design of the project by Danforth. Um, beginning working spring of 2024 through summer and fall of 2025. Uh, with regard to new business, um, there was a discussion about signage and the need to improve wayfinding and district branding across campuses, something that the administration will be working on uh, in the coming months. Uh, there is um, discussion about security and signage in Knox Field uh, with regard to the utilization and placement of cameras and um, the fact that there are you know, at least one dedicated youth hangout spot that becomes troublesome over some time and trying to limit uh, the kinds of activities that might necessitate uh, police activity or, or other disciplinary activity in the public district. Um, safety and security update, the SSBA wiring is all set in all buildings, including cameras in all buildings. Um, access control been completed and operational at Pleasant Ave. Access control completed with the exception of front doors at Lee Knox and Warren. No ac access control work started yet at uh, JSHS. Uh, we are approximately 50% complete, most installed and not yet commissioned, um, and about 80% complete on all wiring. Major work occurring over the spring break. Um, the supply chain issues pushed the timeline out farther than originally planned. Contractors to wire and install as equipment was being delivered. Um, then we reviewed the capital outlay for 2022 23, the removal of uh, one oil tank. Um, we've already covered that in our uh, business uh, this, this evening. Uh, brief presentation about Renovus, uh, which Dr. Crankshaw has already made reference to, um, and small capital project progress. Um, and the Knox Elevated trip uh, work was beginning over spring break. Uh, track and fencing uh, was awaiting a final schedule. However, work is commencing after graduation, um, and there will be some form of fencing taken care of. Next meeting date is Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Then we had personnel committee. Who is that? Dr. Joyelle. Um, the personnel committee met on April 18th. Uh, Dr. Crankshaw discussed that the district is currently taking steps to negotiate um, an SRO contract between the district and the city of Johnstown Police Department. Um, they, are, they have completed the interviews of potential candidates and um, potentially chosen candidate, and also there is a um, SRO handbook that is currently in the development stages. Also, there was a discussion um, of the ongoing review of what to make, uh, I'm sorry, to make sure that the needs of the personnel of the Greater Jackson School District is addressed. Um, some ways that the district is, is doing this is looking to reach qualified candidates, and um, one way was that they attend the Global Jobs Fair, which they just did one this past week in Albany. And also, there is a release of a recruitment video um, that is currently on our YouTube, um, the district's YouTube page. Um, and our next personal committee will be, um, our next personal committee meeting is to be determined. All right, thank you, Joel. We also had an auto budget and finance committee meeting um, on the 18th of April. Um, we um, did a review of the final uh, budget proposal for adoption. Um, the presentation was prepared and ready for this evening's meeting. Um, the uh, long-range financial plan um, uh, was reviewed with regard to the transportation service plan. Uh, we we're in the process of recruiting the transportation director position. Um, and we need to establish a transportation administrative assistant position uh, to complement the director position uh, in uh, completing a transportation plan to take back the program from Bosey. Um, 
Reserve funding strategies were reviewed, uh, specifically reviewed the bus purchase reserve. Uh, we're going to re uh, planning and reconfiguring the bus purchase plan to accommodate changes in the law regarding the purchase of electric buses. Uh, on the ballot from May is the creation of a new construction capital reserve fund for up to $5 million. Uh, the net balance of the bus purchase reserve is to be transferred to the capital reserve uh, as initial seed capital. Uh, recommendation for uh, excess balance based on end of year fund balance. Reserve plan will uh, be reevaluated and accounts will be reconciled. Uh, the reserve plan gets refined as part of the next year's budget process. Then, discussion about debt service fund um, board resolution. The plan is to eliminate the debt service fund as it was incorrectly created, uh, being done as a final step in cleaning up district financials. Uh, board approval required to move funds uh, out of the account. Funds need to be redistributed into other funds correctly to meet legal requirements. Um, and then a brief discussion about negotiations uh, with various um, bargaining units. Um, so our next meeting will be held Tuesday, June 6th at 6.30 p.m. Yeah. Um, back to the personnel for a second. Oh, by the way, you have a newsletter that's going to be going out soon. The, the final draft is in front of you. I folded it over. It's, that's how it will be presented to the board sometime. Um, and also, you have a magnet there, which was part of our recruitment efforts at the job fair. So put that on your fridge. But they don't make those out of metal anymore. Just so. um, and I forgot to tell you about the SRO. We did hold um, the interviews, we had three candidates. Interviews were with Mr. Kramer, Mr. Hale, uh, Police Chief, the Captain Johnson, and myself, and Alicia Costner here. And we settled on one. I can't really talk about it yet until they are told about it. Um, but it's a really solid person, and we're, we're not going to have that person in place until later in the summer, you know, when the school year starts. The contract is in the attorney's hands right now. And there's a handbook of job descriptions and everything involved. And I'm happy to share that with you. I meant to just send it to you, but I'll send it to you tonight. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe we have any correspondence to review. So, um, going back to the end of our agenda, uh, PG, uh, we have some board discussion. Um, which is a continuation of our policy manual audit of Section 6000. Uh, February's review covered personnel uh, policies 6110 to 6180. Our March and April review covered certified personnel and support staff uh, regarding policy 6210 to 6320. In May and June, uh, activities included um, or included review of activities, compensation and benefits, policy 6410 through 6561. Um, then we had board self-evaluation, please. Uh, reminding everybody, if you have not already completed it, to do so before the end of April. So Lorena has provided a link um, that you can access through your email uh, if you've not done so. Uh, does anybody have any need to discuss any of these topics? So we have a few dates coming up, some informational items, our special meeting on April 26th, which is next week at 7 p.m. here in this auditorium. Uh, May 2nd, which is uh, voter registration from 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. here at Knox. May 2nd is the public budget hearing at 6 p.m. here at Knox. May 16th is the Greater Johnstown School District budget vote and board elections, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m at the Johnstown Junior Senior High School. And May 17th is the board business meeting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at Knox. And May 23rd is the facilities committee meeting at 6.30 p.m. at Knox. Uh, do not believe we have uh, an executive session planned for this evening? No? Okay, so can I get a motion to adjourn? Best, enjoy. Um, and all those in favor, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.